Kina Liba Ituti Baba Bedi, Baba Tlang Hubota Di Puto to our teacher in studio Mara He. Ausiana, Yadu Timplaka Mona, Libitola Haike, Aus Precious. Uh, she has a question for our teacher, but before that, Precious, can you tell me and the viewers at home a bit about yourself, you know, what you like, what you like doing in your spare time? Okay, well, I'm actually a talkative person, courageous person also, and I love dancing. I'm a hip-hop dancer. I've been dancing for the past six years now. Okay. Yes. Are you, are you with a crew? Yes, I own a crew. Send a shout-out to them, man. Okay, hi, Enigmatic Fam. Yo, so I'm going to free marketing for you, yes. eh? Yeah. Okay, what is your question to our teacher? My question to the teacher is that what kind of dominance are they? Cool, what kinds of dominance are they? Right, before we can get going with this, I want to do a quick recap of some vocab. So let's have a look at the screen. Our first word is alleles. A pair of genes for a specific trait are located at the same point on each of the two homologous chromosomes. One is from your father and one is from your mother. And they code for the same trait, i.e. eye color, hair, way, is it wavy or straight? or whatever okay you with me guys you should all remember this from last week though right next word we need to know very well is genotype now this is the genetic composition of an organism and it represents the information present in the gene alleles so for example we have a homozygous which is big b big b or little b little b or we can have a heterozygous which is big b little b now depending on the genotype we get a specific phenotype, which is our next important word. And this is the physical appearance of an individual. So it's what you will see when you look at the offspring. And as I said, this is determined by the genotype. Right, once you've got those down, we can move on to the kinds of dominances we have. So I already mentioned earlier, we have three kinds. Let's have a look at the first one. Now, you should remember from last week a guy called Mendel, and Gregor Mendel, you remember? Yeah. Right, and he experimented with pea plants, tall and dwarf pea plants. And what this showed us was that there was a dominant and a recessive allele, and it is stronger and it takes over, and that is what you see physically as the phenotype. Our recessive allele, he's a little bit shy, he's an introvert, he doesn't like to show himself unless he is forced to, and there are two recessive alleles. So, what this means is it is a complete dominance, that's our first kind of dominance, complete. So, either one or the other will be shown. Let's have a look there, we have three possible genotypes, big T, big T, big T, little t, or little t, little t. Now, in our first one, big T, big T, the genotype is homozygous for tall, so the phenotype will be tall. That's it, it's a tall plant, done. Our last one, baby T, baby T, two recessive alleles, so it means the plant is going to be a dwarf plant, a short plant, that's it, done. Okay, the next one, the middle one, we've got our big T and our little T, that's a heterozygous pea plant. It is going to be tall. Even though it has two different alleles, the dominant one is going to take over and he's going to be a big tall plant. We don't get any of these medium sized plants, okay? So complete, full, done, easy. The next kind of dominance we get is co-dominance. And this is where neither allele is completely dominant nor completely recessive. Let's have a quick look at the word co-dominance, little English lesson here as well. Think about the word coordinate. okay, you've got that co at the beginning. Now co means jointly or mutually or something that is common. So if I have really good hand-eye coordination, that means I can catch a ball. My, my hands and my eyes are working together to catch that ball. They are not morphing together to become a hand with an eye on it. They're still two separate things, but they need to work together. Okay, like co-workers in the workplace, they don't all morph into one big blob of lots of people. They are separate people, but they need to work together to accomplish something. So that's how our co-dominance works. Let's have a look at our example, the shorthorn cattle. Now, if you have a look at that picture, on the left hand side we have a red shorthorn cattle and on the right hand side we have a white shorthorn cattle. That means our red one has to be homozygous dominant, capital R, capital R, and our white one has to be homozygous recessive, baby R, baby R. Now, if we get a heterozygous shorthorn cattle, let's have a look what happens because it is co-dominance. There it is. We get a shorthorn that is called a roan cow. 
okay? And we have the big R and the little R. And you can see on that diagram, there are patches of red fur and white fur. So that cattle is showing both of its alleles working together, not mixing, working equally together. So a roan cattle will have equal patches of red fur and white fur because that's what its genotype says it must have. Okay, right, so co-working together, not mixing. Always think of hand-eye coordination. Your hands are working, your eyes are working. They're two separate things, but they need to work together. Okay, let's have a look at our third kind of dominance. It's called in, in, incomplete dominance. Okay, and this is where our alleles blend to create a brand new phenotype. Okay, here we are going back to primary school and we're going to use the example of a snapdragon plant. Let's have a look. With the snapdragon, some of their flowers are red. It is homozygous dominant, capital R, capital R. On the right hand side of your screen, you will see that some of the snapdragon flowers are white. Recessive homozygous, baby R, baby R. Now what happens with this, because it's incomplete dominance, they don't work together separately, they work together by blending. Okay, so primary school, we're mixing red paint and white paint. What color paint do we get? We get pink. Okay, so let's have a look at this snapdragon. This is a heterozygous snapdragon. It has a heterozygous uh, genotype, capital R and a baby R, but it is not patchy red and white patches. It is mixed together, it is blended, and it is pink, beautiful pink color. Okay, so can you guys see the differences? Complete, only the dominant is shown if the dominant genotype is there. If only recessive um, alleles are there, then the recessive will show. But it's one or the other. They don't like to share in complete dominance. In co-dominance and incomplete dominance, the genotype, the heterozygous genotype may be the same, but it's very, very important to remember that the phenotype is displayed differently. The co-dominance, the phenotype is displayed, both alleles are displayed separately, patches of different colors, okay? Oh, okay? Whereas in incomplete dominance, think about the alleles are incomplete, they can't work on their own, so they have to mix together to create a brand, brand, brand new phenotype. Okay, you guys with me? Right, now what is nice with, with incomplete, complete and co-dominance is that you can use your Punnett square that we looked at last week to sort of slot in alleles and then you can see what kind of dominance is this example. And that's what we're going to be doing in the homework question as well. So that's all I've got for this lesson. It's really, really basic. Just make sure you remember the different kinds of dominance and do not get confused between co and incomplete. Okay, co, hand coordination, incomplete, can't live without you, let's mix together. Mm. I'm sitting here with the second precious of the day. Clearly, this school is just so precious. How are you, precious? I'm blessed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good also. Thank you for asking me. Eh? <laughs> I want a precious. How are you, Mara? I am man. I am man. Mm -hmm. What is your question to our teacher? My question is what are sex linked disorders? Right. What are sex linked disorders? Now, as usual, I want to do a little bit of a recap because that's the most important part of your studying. Revision, revision, revision. So first recap, let's have a look. The nuclei of diploid somatic human cells contain 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. So overall, you have 23 pairs or 46 single chromosomes. You already know that, super easy. Right, when we look at the sex chromosomes, females have XX and our males have XY. How does this happen? Now you've already learned about gametogenesis and during this process, meiosis takes place in the ovaries and the testes and it produces both eggs and sperm. Now eggs are always X, so the chromosome you get from your mom is the X chromosome. Sperm, on the other hand, will either be X or it will be Y. So whether you are a boy or a girl depends on your dad, depends on the sperm that joins that little egg. So if you get an X sperm joining the X egg, you are a girl. And if you get a Y sperm joining the X egg, you are XY, so you are a boy, 
Okay, right, we've got it. Very, very easy. Now, these sex chromosomes don't just decide, hey, you're a boy or you're a girl. They also carry certain genes on them. Okay, let's have a look. These alleles found on these sex chromosomes are called sex-linked alleles. Now, we are human, our bodies are human, and sometimes during meiosis there is a mutation or something goes wrong. And if that happens, we may get a disorder. Sometimes we just get a disorder because we were a little unlucky and we were, we, we were given or we ended up with the recessive sex allele on that sex chromosome. So we're gonna look at two of these sex-linked disorders today. The first one is hemophilia. Right, if you don't know what that is, keep listening. I'm gonna tell you in a few slides time. Now, hemophilia is a sex-linked disorder caused by a gene mutation at the tip of the X chromosome. So think about it. If you're a girl, you have twice as much chance as a boy of being a hemophiliac because you have two X chromosomes, whereas a boy only has one. Right, what this gene mutation does is it, it just happens spontaneously and it is then passed down from generation to generation on the faulty chromosome. And if you have this faulty chromosome, you will have a dysfunctional protein which prevents the normal clotting process. In other words, your body won't be able to form scabs. So if you get cut, your body can't heal up that wound and you will just bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. Okay, so hemophilia is actually quite a dangerous thing. And it's important that you know if you are a hemophiliac or not. Because if you are in a car crash or you fall riding your bicycle and you get a cut, it is quite dangerous because you're just bleeding profusely. Your body can't stop it. So it's very important that people around you know it so that if you are in an accident or just graze your arm, something as easy as falling off your chair and grazing your arm, you know, you could bleed dangerously close to death kind of thing okay so that's what hemophilia is let's have a look at the second sex link disorder that we're looking at today this is color blindness okay now the gene for color vision is also on the x chromosome okay so you would think it's more common in women but in fact it's more common in men and we're going to look at that just now it is a recessive disorder so if you have the recessive gene for color vision you will then be color blind now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you only see in black and white, okay? What it means is that you have a deficiency of color vision. So it's not that you're blind, you just can't see as well as others. Specifically, you can't see colors as well as others. Now, if you know five people who are colorblind, they may all have different degrees of colorblindness. Some of them may only be colorblind at night or in a dark sort of room. Mm. Others may be colorblind all the time. So it really depends on the extent of that, of that allele, okay? Right, um, the, the male, the, if a male has the colorblind allele on his only X chromosome, he will automatically be colorblind. So for guys, it's either you've got it or you don't, chilled vibes, okay? Now let's have a look at this next diagram on the screen. Can you see that there is a number within that picture? Can you see it guys in studio? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Eight. Number eight, great. You're not colorblind. Yay! Oh. Okay, someone who is colorblind most often cannot distinguish between pink and green. Okay, so that's why we use this kind of color wheel with lots of pink and green dots. And if you can't really see what's going on there, chances are you are colorblind. Okay, right now let's have a look at females and how they deal with color blindness. Now, one of the female's X chromosomes will become deactivated and turned into a bar body. This is just a random fact of nature and scientists have always been baffled by this, okay? Let's have a look what happens if the female then gets that recessive allele for color blindness on her deactivated chromosome. She will only be a carrier and she could have color blind children, but she will not be color blind herself because that X chromosome doesn't work. It's deactivated. Uh. So only if she happens to get that recessive allele on her working or on her activated X chromosome will she be colorblind herself.